After we have collected all the necessary tools from our excursion to homological algebra, we are now finally in the shape to clarify the role of the coefficients in homology. And as it turns out, this is entirely a matter of algebra, yeah? meaning we will formulate this as um, a theorem on chain complexes and only afterwards uh, do the application to singular homology. So the result goes by the name of the universal coefficient theorem. And it has the following statement. So it's typically abbreviated as UCT. Like this is correct, yeah. I always confuse it with UTC, which is the coordinated universal time, right? But UCT is the universal coefficient theorem. And it says the following. So we fix a principal ideal domain R. So it's only a statement about a certain type of rings. Let R be a principal ideal domain, or for short, a PID. And say we have a chain complex, C star, of projective R modules, projective modules over this principal ideal domain. And let's moreover assume that chain complex is positive, meaning there are no, um, or all modules in negative degrees are zero. So let C star be a projective, positive chain complex of R modules. Then the question the universal coefficient theorem wants to answer is, what happens if I take this chain complex C star and I form the tensor product with some given fixed R module M and afterwards, I take the homology. So how does this new homology relate to the former homology where I did not take any tensor product? So let's take such a new R module M. And then the statement is for every such module. So then for every R module M, we have a natural short exact sequence. natural short exact sequence of the following type. So what we're interested in goes to the middle. So the nth homology of the tensor product of the chain complex C star with M. And well, maybe a first naive guess or a first attempt of what you could think might be true is that taken tensor products and taken homology commutes. Yeah, so maybe when we're lucky, this should be the same as just taking the homology of the original chain complex C star. Yeah, parenthesis and afterwards we tensor, tensor with N. And it turns out that sometimes this actually works and one does get such an isomorphism, but in general not. In general, the statement is we only have an inclusion of this homology tensor module into the homology of the tensorized chain complex. And the co-kernel, which exists in general, well, is now something that we have uh, well prepared in previous lectures. It's given by the Tor functor. And Functor for this PIDR in first degree of the homology, and now have to, one has to be careful the homology in one degree lower. So the n minus first homology of this chain complex C star together with this module M. Yeah, and short exact sequence, of course, means afterwards we get zero here. Okay, let's put it like this. Right, and uh, this theorem is a little stronger than this, or well, quite a bit stronger than this, because it additionally says that this are, these are actually split exact sequences. Yeah? So one does not have to solve some extension problem here to find out what the middle, middle module is, but actually the middle module is the direct sum of the outer two modules. So let's formulate that. So first of all, this chain complex exists for all n. 
the short exact sequence exists for all n greater or equal to zero. And the second statement is what I just said, the sequence splits. And I think it's good to discuss a little more in detail in what way it splits, namely it splits via, a, say, um, which one do I want? A left split, so an arrow going from this module to this module here, such that the composition starting here and going back is the identity on the left-hand module. And such a split, ah, never mind. Do I want, no, I want, no, I want to take the split on the other side. Sorry about that. I want to take this split here, so from the Tor module to the middle module in such a way that the composition from here and going back is the identity. This is the one I want to consider. I mean, if one exists, then the other exists, but right now I want to um, consider the right split. So that goes from the Tor module of the n minus first homology of C to the middle homology. HNC star tensor M. And now you can consider this split SN as a map in two variables if you want. The first one is the module M here and here. And the second one is this chain complex C star here. And the splitting turns out to be natural in M, but in general not natural in this chain complex C star. So only natural in one variable. So via splitting SN, and Sn is natural in M, but, and I just, to exclude dumb cases, let me write not generally. I mean, maybe if the whole chain complex is zero, then there's also natural splitting in the other case or something, so just to be safe. But generally, um, not in C star. Yeah, so meaning one can make Sn, or one can consider Sn for a fixed C star as a natural, as, as the, um, com how are they called? The components of a natural transformation when I plug in each M here, so that everything commutes with morphisms, but there's no way to do this for, in general, for the chain complex C star here. Okay, right, so, Maybe one immediate consequence of this theorem is, if you look at it, then actually it turns out that one can compute the homology of this twisted chain complex, C star tensor Rm, if one only knows the homology of the original chain complex, Hn C star, yeah? Because, well, that the sequence splits means this middle one is really the direct sum of the two outer ones. So if you have the information of what those modules are, you know what this middle module is. But the left-hand one is just a tensor product and we discussed over principal ideal domains how to compute tensor products. So we're in good shape. We know how to do it if we only know what is HNC star. And the same goes for the Tor module. For principal ideal domains, we also um, formulated all the rules to compute it. And what we put in is only the homology, the N minus first homology of C star. So without knowing what the original chain complex was, yeah, we only need to know the homology of this chain complex and then we can find the homology of the twisted chain complex. And this is maybe a little surprising and therefore, well, this is also a non-trivial theorem that needs proof, yeah? So let me just write down this remark as a reminder. So the theorem says in particular that the homology, only the homology of the chain complex C star determines the homology of the twisted chain complex. Okay, so let's enter the proof. And let me start by recalling notation that we have used previously. So we denote the cycles, meaning the kernels of the differentials in the chain complex Cn by Zn. So this is a submodule of Cn, just the kernel of the nth differential in the chain complex. And similarly, the boundaries are the images of the differentials in the chain complex, and we denote them by B as in boundaries. So Bn is just the image of the n plus first differential, 
and hence it's also a submodule of Cn. And then we use two short exact sequences which have already appeared in the course, actually in the video about um, the Euler characteristic. And if you remember uh, the proof where it was shown that Euler characteristic can be computed in terms of homology, there are also two short exact sequences appeared. And let me just recall these two. Well, the first one is the one that just says, um, if I include my cycles into the chain module, just the inclusion, so I'll call it IN, and I take the boundary operator to the N minus one boundaries in my chain complex, then this is, um, yeah, immediate that this is a short exact sequence, right? Because, well, this is surjective because I just, as a, by definition, I took the image of this map here, and well, the kernel of the nth differential is by definition the um, cycles. So this submodule here, which is therefore some inclusion, so completely clear that this is a short exact sequence. And something better is true because I assumed in the theorem that actually C star was a projective chain complex, meaning it consists of projective modules. And now we use the assumption that the ring R is a principal ideal domain and modules over principal ideal domains have the nice property that submodules of projective modules are again projective. And uh, since Cn minus one is projective, so is Bn minus one. And therefore I can solve the lifting prob problem here of uh, mapping the identity on Bn minus one inside here and solving this uh, lifting problem amounts to finding a split of this short exact sequence. So in fact, this is not only a short exact sequence, but a split short exact sequence. And the second um, short exact sequence, which will be rele relevant for our proof, is the following one. It's just the one that defines homology, yeah? So boundaries, as we know by the chain complex condition, are in particular cycles, and their quotient is just, by definition, the nth homology. Yeah, so this short exact sequence now just is what defines homology. Let's call the inclusion Jn to distinguish it from the In above. And let's call this projection Pn here from the cycles into the homology. And here, of course, since Hn is just a quotient of projective modules, we cannot, uh, yeah, we cannot conclude that this would be projective. So we have no um, splitting statement for this second short exact sequence. Okay, so with these two short exact sequence, we will work now. And the first thing, well, the first thing is maybe to write down again what I just said, why it splits. So R is a PID. This implies that the N minus one boundaries are projective, which implies that the first one splits. This is what I just explained. And the good thing about split short exact sequences is if you now take the tensor product with M, you get, a, you get again a short exact sequence, yeah? even a split short exact sequence. And uh, as we know, as we learned before, this is generally not true. Yeah? If you apply the tensor product to a short exact sequence, you cannot expect to get a short exact sequence again. The failure is precisely what's measured by the torsion submodule, about, sorry, by the torsion functor. Um, but if you have a splitting, then you can of course, apply this tensor functor to the splitting, and this will give you a split of the tensorized uh, short exact sequence. And this is why we get from the first sequence again a short exact sequence after tensorizing with M. So let's do that. So we get oops, the following short exact sequence. I just take the end cycles, tensor them with, with M, then the boundaries. Excuse me, then the chain complex, Cn tensor R with M, and afterwards the n minus 1 boundaries tensor M. Okay, so I have this short exact sequence of R modules now. And what I do next is, well, I have them for every n, so I can also consider them just as a whole family. So let me just erase the index n here everywhere and put our star here, which we used for varying n's throughout the course. 
And then I claim that this does not only this is, does not only level-wise define short exact sequences, but actually that this is a short exact sequence of chain complexes. If I define the differentials in the two outer chain complexes just by zero, yeah, I mean I can trivially satisfy my chain complex condition by saying all differentials are zero. And then what I'm asserting in addition, if I say this is not only a level-wise short exact sequence, but a short exact sequence of chain complexes is that I also have commutative squares if I go by the differentials here and then I go over. So if I say that those differentials are zeros, are zero, the ones that go vertically downwards, then of course this commut commutativity would just say that the other composition is also zero and this is what one has to check. But well, if I go along here, so I include my cycles here and afterwards I take the differential, well by definition a cycle is um, where the nth differential vanishes, so we'll end up at zero by this composition also. And how about the other side? So there, if the differential on the outside is zero, then this composition is zero. I have to check that the other composition is zero. But if I go down here, then I go, then I go along one differential in the chain complex C and remember this horizontal arrow is, out, is also just a differential in the chain complex C star, tensorized, but yes. So actually this composition here is um, the composition of two succeeding differentials in the chain complex C star and therefore it's also zero. Okay, so this justified that this is actually a short exact sequence of chain complexes. So let me write this. Um, this is a short exact sequence of chain complexes. with zero differentials on the outer terms. Yeah? So with zero differentials. On the left and right. So on the outer two chain complexes. Okay, and now you already know what's going to happen whenever we have a short exact sequence of chain complexes. What we get out of this is a long exact sequence in homology. So let's consider the corresponding long exact sequence in homology. So maybe this should still be visible. Okay. So we get a long exact sequence. And where should it start? Maybe it sh let's put in the middle again what we are most interested in, namely the homology of this term here, yeah? The homology of the middle chain complex. So that's H N C star tensor N. And uh, well, let's first extend it on the left. So now comes the nth homology of this chain complex here. But remember this chain complex has zero differentials. So taken homology doesn't do any anything, yeah? The chain modules will just be the homology modules. So this will just be Z N tensor Rm. And maybe we should get, uh, should extend this long exact sequence one more time to the left. So what now comes is the boundary homomorphism from one degree higher. But remember one degree higher means now I plug in N plus one in the star. So all together I get the end boundaries, the N boundaries here. And again, homology doesn't do anything because this chain complex has zero differentials. So actually the boundary homomorphism starts at Bn here. Okay, and well, this boundary homomorphism came out of the snake lemmas. I think we denoted it delta. And I should argue now that the index probably should be n plus one, yeah? Because I want to say that this original sequence up here has degree n when the star is n, so this would be the n plus first differential. And well, the long exact sequence extends indefinitely, but let's now consider the other side. So after the homology here, we now go into the homology of this one. Once again, there's no differentials, so that's just the n minus one boundaries. And uh, next thing is again the 
differential and the differential now lowers the degree by one so I don't end up at Zn here but at Zn minus one. So maybe, yeah, should I open up a second? Maybe I should open up a second line. Yeah, well, it's not visible anyway. <laughs> okay, never mind. So the next one is Zn minus one tensor Rm and so on and so forth. And this new differential has index n then. So this boundary operator coming from the snake lemma has index n here. Okay, so that's nice. We now have already a long exact sequence where we have the term here in the middle that is of our interest, but we wanna come up with a short exact sequence. That's the statement of the universal coefficient theorem. But there's a general technique to get short exact sequences out of long exact sequences, and this is what we're gonna apply next. Namely, we replace some modules by submodules or by quotients here. Um, right. So, ah, okay, I wanted to do this later. Yeah. So maybe, okay, so maybe let's, that was a little too fast, so maybe let's fix this long exact sequence that we obtained and let's now work with the other short exact sequence I started at the beginning and out of this we'll uh, construct another long exact sequence and these two will then match to give our desired results. So the second short exact sequence, so remember which one was that? That's the one defining the homology. I think this is not so bad if it's not visible. It's just the one where the cycles are in the middle and we mod out the boundaries to obtain homology. So this short exact sequence um, yields the corresponding Tor long exact sequence. So yields the Tor long exact sequence, which we derived in a previous video and how did that go? Well, remember, tensor, taking tensor products is only right exact. So if we apply the tensor product to our short exact sequence, we already have um, a four term short exact sequence. Let me write that one down. So that's um, Bn tensor Rm going into Zn tensor Rm. And from there going into the homology, Hn C star C star tensor Rm. And surjectivity is also preserved here. Oh, sorry, that's important now. So bracket has to go here. Yeah, we take the tensor product of the short exact sequence. So this one, one always has if I take the tensor product, but the problem is that I cannot in general extend this by zero on the left, but instead that's what we constructed it for, comes the Tor functor. So this is Tor R one of, okay, let's move this a little over, of H and C star, so the right hand term in the original short exact sequence, comma M. And now this long exact torus sequence would also extend indefinitely on the left, but remember the next terms are now, well, the tor functor of um, this guy here, comma M, and this guy here, comma M, so of Zn comma M and of Bn comma M. But remember that again, we have a projective chain module over principal ideal domain, so these submodules are projective again. And it was a general property of the tor functor that it vanishes whenever you plug in a projective module in either variable. So therefore actually the next term in this sequence is zero and actually all the remaining terms are zero because well, we only have this two more Tor functors in degree one, which are zero by projectivity. And afterwards um, the higher degree Tor functors would appear in this long exact sequence, but they are zero anyway for principal ideal domains as we've seen. So it turns out that actually um, the long exact sequence of Tor functors here is not so long uh, in this particular case. It has only, I don't know, three, six terms probably, including the zeros. Okay, so this is um, the second ingredient and let's now maybe also say what 
some maps are here. So remember, Bn was just included in the cycles, and we took the tensor product of this inclusion. So this map is just the inclusion In we denoted earlier, tensor the identity on M. And now further above, we also have a more homomorphism appearing between um, Bn tensor M and Zn tensor M. So this is this one here in the um, long exact sequence that came out of the short exact sequence of chain complexes. So it would be nice to know that actually these two morphisms are the same. And they actually are. They are the same. I mean, why? Remember, this was sort of complicated to construct this map delta n plus 1 in the snake lemma. But if we think about it, so maybe let's get the short exact sequence back into the picture. How was this um, boundary homomorphism defined? Well, one took an element of the kernel of the differential here, which is just some element because the differential is zero. And then one picks a pre-image along this arrow. So sort of what you pick is you pick a co-boundary. Yeah? So you have a boundary here. You pick a chain of which um, this boundary is the boundary. Yeah? This is the first step. And afterwards, one goes along here by this snake lemma argument. So one applies the differential again to this co-boundary. But that means, well, I'm back at the original um, boundary that I started with. And then what ju just takes the unique pre-image here by the inclusion, I mean, well, this original boundary is, of course, a, a cycle. So it already lies in the submodule. And this is the one um, I come out of um, by yeah, applying the uh, snake lemma. And again, the differentials are 0 here. So um, taking the co-kernel doesn't do anything. So what this actually is, long story short, this boundary homomorphism is also just the inclusion of boundaries into cycles. So maybe I write this here. So we have that delta n plus 1. This homomorphism is not defined, but is nothing else than the inclusion i n tensor the identity on n. OK, so now we got all that we need. So let's give this um, long exact sequence a name here. This one here, let's call it 3. And now I do what I wanted to do earlier already. I say that this long exact sequence 3 splits into short exact sequences. So the long exact sequence 3 splits into short exact sequences as follows. So again, term of interest goes in the middle, hn c star tensor rm. And let's, OK, so sorry for scrolling so much, but I need to make it visible. So this term. Um, lies here. And I now want to put it inside a short exact sequence in the middle. So the next arrow should be surjective. Of course, it will not in general be surjective because, well, I've, it will just be end up in this module here. But I can stupidly make it surjective by just saying I take the image of this map here. Yeah? And only consider the arrow onto its image. But then by exactness, the image uh, of this arrow inside this module here is the same as the kernel of the um, next arrow, which is this n's differential. And the n's differential we just discussed is actually this i n minus 1 tensor at n. So OK, let me just first of all write it as the kernel of delta n. OK, and then I automatically have subjectivity here that replace this morphism by the morphism to the image. And I do something similar on the left-hand side. So let's get back to the long exact sequence. I have this homomorphism here. I want it to be injective. It will not be injective in general, but I can make it injective, as we all know, by factoring out the kernel of this homomorphism. So if I take out the kernel, then I end up, end up in a, at an injective homomorphism. But the kernel by exactness at this um, point of the sequence is the same as the image of the previous arrow, which is the n plus first differential. So I can replace this module actually by the co-kernel of this map. Yeah? So this target modulo, the image of delta n plus 1, which is exactly the co-kernel of delta n plus 1. Yeah, so this is the usual procedure of getting 
short exact sequence out of sequences out of long exact sequences. You just replace modules by kernels and co-kernels. Okay. So this short exact sequence is now our candidate for the for the sequence that the universal coefficient theorem claims it exists. So we have to identify the two outer terms that they are actually what we what we said previously. And well, why why is that? Let's see. So maybe let's start at the kernel of delta n. Um, right. So delta of n, as I just said up here, would be the same as the kernel of i n minus one tensor it m. But we find this very um, this very morphism also in the other short exact sequence that we derived here in two. Then it would be this one, well, in one degree lower. Yeah, you have to replace everywhere n minus one here, so it's the same um, as the kernel of this homomorphism here. But since this is a short exact sequence, the kernel of this homomorphism is the image of this homomorphism, and this is just an inclusion, right? So we see that actually the kernel of delta n turns out to be this torsion, a torsion functor tor one of h n c star comma m, which is precisely what we wanted. Yeah, so this is isomorphic to Tor one R H N C star comma M. And now hopefully we can also identify correctly this co-kernel here. So let's see what happens to that. So this is now really the co-kernel of I N tensor it M. Yeah, this is what was written here. And um, the co-kernel means where is it? The co-kernel means, well, it's the co-kernel of this homomorphism here, since delta n plus one is just this homomorphism. But since this is an exact sequence, yeah, the co-kernel of this homomorphism is just this quotient here, yeah, by exactness, All right? So, yeah. So we can replace also this with what we wanted. This is actually h n of c star tensor R M. Okay, so maybe as a quick reminder, in the video on exactness of functors, we saw that this four term exact sequence here was saying the same thing as if we had a um, push out square yeah, of these four terms with the zero in the lower left corner. And um, right, and for the Pullback square, no, sorry, for the push out square, we saw that the, the object in the lower right corner, well, it's um, just the co-kernel, so therefore this H and C star RM is the co-kernel of this homomorphism here. We can also see it directly in the sequence, but yeah. All right, so this is actually already the universal, I mean, the short exact sequence of the universal coefficient theorem. This is what we wanted to prove, that this exists. But remember, there's a second statement in the theorem. We still have to discuss the splitting of this short exact sequence. And this is now not too hard to do. So I can construct a left inverse of this map alpha n. So hopefully I put down alpha n in the beginning. So again, I have to scroll. Let's see. Where is it? No, I didn't. Okay, so this, this map, I wanted to denote it alpha n and well, maybe this then beta n. So we won't need it anymore. So what I want to do is I want to construct a splitting now. So I, this time, this is why I was confused in the beginning. I want to construct the splitting on this side of the short exact sequence. Um, so I need to construct a left inverse of alpha n. Yeah. So that the composition of first alpha n and then this inverse gives the identity on the left hand side. So let's con construct that map. So a left inverse of alpha n can be defined as follows. Now goes from the homology in the middle to h n c star tensor m. And well, 
So what do I need to do? I need to take um, a homology class of this tensorized chain complex. So it's um, given by, or as usual, it's enough to define it on elementary tensors. So let's take an elementary tensor in this homology class, C tensor M. And I know want to uh, put it into a homology class in C star tensor sum M. So first of all, I need to get from C star to this homology the ends homology of C star, and how do I do this? Again, I need my previous um, notes. So where is it? Let me see. Should be in the beginning of the proof. Ah, right. Yes. So where is it? Uh -huh. Right. So this as we saw in the beginning, is a short exact sequence that splits, and therefore I also have by the splitting lemma a split in this direction. So I obtain a homomorphism, call it Rn, as in retract maybe, that goes from the nth chain module to the nth cycles. Yeah? And this is the one I will use now to define the splitting of our universal coefficient theorem sequence. Because I have now my element in the chain complex C star. Following Rn, I obtain a cycle in Z star. Yeah. And I consider its homology class. So I end up at the homology here, and I take the tensor, the elementary tensor with the M that I had before. And now it's a really quick computation that this is actually a left inverse. I mean, it is simply by construction, because this was a splitting. So that works. And the other part of the theorem was to discuss the naturality of the splitting. And I think this can be said quickly now. So it's conceivable that since this um, tensor, or this m factor of the tensor just um, appears undamaged here, therefore um, everything will commute with, hom with homomorphisms in the m variable. But the reason why one cannot expect this splitting to be natural in the C star variable is that one has the choice of this uh, splitting sitting here. Yeah, I mean, there was no canonical way that one gets this. There will be a whole bunch of whole family of splittings of this short exact sequence. And there's no way of consistently um, choose one for every possible C star so that all homomorphism squares will commute. So this is the reason, um, in short, why this won't work. Um, in the C variable. So let's put it here. I want to do this in a different, well, never mind. So this is natural. And this part due to this uh, chosen splitting here is not natural. Okay, and that completes the proof of the universal coefficient theorem. So now we did a lot of algebra. And finally comes the point of return to topology. So um, we, of course, did this with the singular chain complex in mind when thinking about the chain complex C star. And correspondingly, we obtained the following topological um, corollary. So let's fix all data again to be sure that it's all stated. So R is still a PID. Um, M is some R module. And now homology will really define, it uh, will really mean singular homology. So let's just write H star is H star sing um, blank comma R. And let's take some given, yeah, let's give ourselves some pair of spaces, x comma a. And then the corollary is just obtained by applying the previous theorem to the singular chain complex. And what happens then is in the middle I get the homology of the singular chain complex tensorized with this module M, but this was our definition in a previous video of um, singular homology with coefficients in M. So this will just give, um, yeah. So do I want it to write with an M? Yes, let's write it with an M. X A semicolon M, so that's the middle term. And 
on the right hand side we now obtain this tor functor of the homology in one degree lower and now this is the original homology yeah, of the singular chain complex just with coefficients in r and the second variable is the module m and on the left hand side we obtain what we hoped it would be so it's the nth homology of x comma a tensor r with m and the statement is now that this is a short exact sequence and that it actually also splits yeah so draw a nice arrow so it's a split short exact sequence and again the statement is that the splitting is natural in m but not natural in the space pair of spaces x comma a short exact so first of all the whole sequence is natural Um, and the splitting is natural in M and I do not assert any naturality for, for the uh, space variable. And now we see that uh, this is actually what we wanted. So it turns out that homology with coefficient in some module M is entirely determined by the original homology. Yeah? So the homology N x comma A here on the left hand side, the homology, homology in N minus first degree on the right hand side. This is all we need to know to actually compute this homology as the direct, direct sum of the two outer terms and the formulas or the technique for computing those tensor products and tor functors were, pre were presented in previous lectures, so now we're in good shape and we always will know how to compute homology with coefficients in M.